Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder that leads to hyperthyroidism. This condition occurs when the body produces excessive amounts of thyroid hormones, specifically triiodothyronine and thyroxine. The overproduction of these hormones results in various physiological changes. Epidemiology Graves' disease affects approximately 1 to 2% of the population. It is significantly more common in women, with a ratio of 5 to 1 compared to men. This gender disparity highlights the need for targeted awareness and screening in female populations. Pathophysiology The underlying cause of Graves' disease involves autoantibodies known as thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins. These antibodies stimulate the thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor, leading to increased synthesis and release of thyroid hormones. This process can result in an enlarged thyroid gland, commonly referred to as a goiter. Clinical Presentation Patients with Graves' disease often present with a range of symptoms. Common manifestations include weight loss despite an increased appetite, nervousness, anxiety, and irritability. Individuals may experience heat intolerance and increased sweating, along with palpitations and tachycardia, where the heart rate frequently exceeds 100 beats per minute. Gastrointestinal symptoms may include diarrhea or frequent bowel movements. Women may also report menstrual irregularities. Ocular symptoms occur in approximately 25% of patients, known as Graves' orbitopathy, which can manifest as pertosis or bulging eyes and periorbital edema. Diagnosis Diagnosis of Graves' disease relies on clinical evaluation and laboratory testing. Key indicators include elevated serum levels of free thyroxine and suppressed thyroid-stimulating hormone levels. The presence of thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins can further confirm the diagnosis. Complications One significant complication associated with Graves' disease is thyroid storm, a life-threatening exacerbation of hyperthyroidism. Symptoms of thyroid storm include high fever exceeding 102 degrees Fahrenheit, tachycardia with heart rates greater than 140 beats per minute, altered mental status, and gastrointestinal disturbances such as nausea and vomiting. Prompt recognition and treatment are essential to prevent high mortality rates associated with this condition. Management Initial management focuses on stabilizing the patient. This includes fluid resuscitation to address dehydration and the administration of beta blockers, such as propranolol at doses ranging from 60 to 80 milligrams taken by mouth every four to six hours or through intravenous administration. Thionamides, such as methimazole, are utilized to inhibit the synthesis of thyroid hormones. Glucocorticoids may also be indicated to reduce inflammation and inhibit the conversion of inactive thyroid hormone to its active form. Immediate supportive care for thyroid storm. Immediate supportive care is critical in managing thyroid storm. Cooling measures should be implemented to address hyperthermia, which can significantly impact patient stability. Intravenous fluids are essential to prevent dehydration and maintain adequate circulation. These initial interventions help stabilize the patient while further treatment is initiated. Thyroid-specific therapy for thyroid storm. The primary goals of thyroid-specific therapy are to decrease thyroid hormone synthesis, prevent the release of thyroid hormones, and reduce the peripheral effects of circulating hormones. Antithyroid drugs, specifically thionamides, should be administered immediately to inhibit the formation of new thyroid hormones. Propylthiouracil is often preferred due to its rapid onset and ability to inhibit the conversion of thyroxine to triiodothyronine. A loading dose of 600 mg should be given orally or via a nasogastric tube, followed by doses of 200 to 250 mg every 4 to 6 hours. Methimazole is another option, with an initial dose of 20 to 30 mg every 4 to 6 hours. 
Iodine solutions should be administered at least one hour after starting thionamide therapy to block the release of thyroid hormones. Options include Lugal solution or saturated solution of potassium iodide. Corticosteroids for thyroid storm. Corticosteroids play a significant role in managing thyroid storm by inhibiting the peripheral conversion of thyroxine into triiodothyronine. Hydrocortisone is commonly used with an initial intravenous dose of 100 mg every 6 hours until the thyroid storm resolves. Alternatively, dexamethasone can be administered at a dose of 2 mg intravenously every 6 hours, with tapering based on clinical response. Beta blockers for thyroid storm. Beta blockers are important for controlling symptoms associated with thyroid storm particularly tachycardia. Propranolol is frequently used for this purpose and can be administered intravenously if the patient is unstable or unable to take oral medications. This intervention helps manage heart rate and reduce peripheral effects of excess thyroid hormones. Plasmapheresis for thyroid storm. In severe cases where standard treatments are ineffective, plasmapheresis may be considered. This procedure removes plasma from the body, which can help reduce levels of bound thyroid hormones and autoantibodies rapidly. Studies have shown that plasmapheresis can lead to significant reductions in free thyroxine and triiodothyronine levels, making it a valuable option in refractory cases of thyroid storm. Long-term treatment options. For long-term management, antithyroid drugs are often used as first-line therapy in many regions. Radioactive iodine ablation is commonly employed in North America as a definitive treatment for hyperthyroidism due to Graves' disease. Surgical intervention may be necessary for patients who do not respond to medical therapy or who present with large goiters causing compressive symptoms. Follow-up care. Patients diagnosed with Graves' disease require regular monitoring of thyroid function tests after treatment initiation. Referral to an endocrinologist is recommended for ongoing management and monitoring of thyroid hormone levels. This approach helps ensure optimal patient outcomes and management of potential complications associated with the condition. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.